it's crystal clear to everybody that we're entering uh, another unprecedented era. Um, and we're in a space currently, aren't we, all of us, uh, in what Margaret Somerville has referred to as the unknown or a state of unknowingness. And it's clear that what we need to do at this point is to be mindful of our health and mindful of others. And for that reason, um, and obviously guided by, uh, in part by government diktat, is that we need to cancel our first event. Um, that was involving uh, Catherine Ingram. Um, what we intend to do is in future is to ensure that we bring these conversations to you through another means, and that's going to be online. What we're really mindful of, we've had a lot of cons conversations internally in Nagara about how do we respond to this crisis? What can we do at a local level? Um, how can we engage people in what are very concerning times? And I think it's the case that in a situation in which people are cancelling events, people are pulling out of things, there's closures of various institutions, um, all the places we normally attend have suddenly evaporated, um, causing great strife and problems for people, um, that we at Nagara want to play a key role in terms of supporting people out there in the community and to addressing the challenges that we're all facing at a economic level, but also socially and spiritually. And I think there's no better time than now to begin a conversation around what's important for all of us and what's going to get us through this crisis. What we're going to need more than anything at this juncture is to connect with each other as close, closely and as meaningfully as we can. And that means reaching out to our friends, to our acquaintances, to people, to our neighbours, to people in our communities, to ensure that those people on the edges of our community, people who are poor, people who are marginalised, that those people are included in our concerns and that we give them a sense that they are being supported, thought about and cared for. Um, we are going to enter very, very difficult times. And um, so we at Nagara have considered what we can actually do to help those people in the community to come to terms with what's happening. It's going to be a really difficult process. We're going to go through a lot emotionally. There's going to be many challenges. There is deep seated fear in the community about where we're going with this. There is no doubt about it and there is no avoiding that we are going to experience challenges that we've not experienced before in our lifetimes. So it is an opportunity, as I say, to reconnect, to support each other. Um, and through our online forums, what we will do is keep the conversations going and keep the Nagara community going um, to enable us to reflect on how we can respond meaningfully to what's occurring. You'll all be aware that um, the Nagara Institute relies on its events to generate income so we can keep the whole enterprise going. And as you all know, it's been a very successful um, initiative uh, over a number of years now. Um, so we will in effect lose that income in terms of people giving us uh, donations as they enter through our doors to particular events. So what we're asking you to do, um, if you have the opportunity and the means to do so, is to try and keep up that cultural practice of actually donating at a different door, and that'll be online. Um, but to help us as much as, as you possibly can to ensure that we can help to keep the people we have employed, to keep them on, uh, to pay for our administration and to pay for various other services associated with Nagara. This is really important for a number of reasons, but essentially to keep us bound together as a community and to enable us to provide this service. Uh, I'm sure you'll all agree that those of you who have attended our events, they've been extremely useful. But the most important thing I think they've provided for a lot of people is a sense of community connection and reconnection. And people have got to know each other. They've got to you know, mix with each other. But most importantly, we've shared conversations and ideas over a number of years. And I'd really like to see that continue with your support. So if you please can con contribute, that would be wonderful. And we'd be most appreciative of your support. Thank you. What's really interesting to me is how people are responding to this crisis. 
and we are each responding in our own particular ways. I'm casting no judgment on that. But I think at a political level, what's interesting is that the response has largely been, obviously in response to the health crisis itself. And that's been a very patchy response around the world, including Australia's response. What the, 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 the second major concern has been the economy. And I get that. I get that. You know, because people, millions of people around the world will lose their jobs as a result of this, particularly, particularly if we descend into a depression of the 1929 variety. It's going to cause enormous hardship. But I think what we also need, if we need a stimulus package of the economy, we also need a stimulus package for the mind, for the heart, mind and soul. And we need to rebuild those connections that are essential to our being. We are, after all, social creatures. We need each other, particularly in times of crisis. And I think that the more we can connect, and that, that may be, well, through online, increasingly so, the more we will find a way through this particular crisis. Um, we cannot respond to this simply at an economic level. It has to be, we have to respond at various levels. And we have to attend to people's feelings, to their, to their sense of fear and apprehension. Um, and their terror of the unknown of what's coming uh, because the next few months will be extremely challenging for all of us. So let's attend to a, a rescue package, which is about also nourishing the spirit and the heart and the soul.